tuning into Charlani TV. Today is going to be a fun day. We're gonna do something I've never done before, and that is frost and decorate a cake beautifully. <laughs> This is my inspo pick. This is what I'm going to try to do. I have never done this before. I have made cakes for like, when Kaylee was little, I made her a Barbie cake, but it was nothing super fancy. I think I did make Robbie a dinosaur cake once, and but it came with like directions on exactly how to do all the things. So this is definitely going to be something new. So I've already started the process. I've already done several things. I am cake ready, like everything is ready to go, and now it's time for me to actually decorate. So, let me bring you up to speed. I wanted the filling to be whipped cream, so I whipped up a really quick batch. It's so simple to make. It's just a carton of heavy whipping cream, and then you add in, as it starts to solidify, you add in some of the granulated sugar slowly, and once it is at the consistency of like thick butter, then you know it's ready. So I stuck that in the fridge and let it just kind of chill and wait for me until our cakes were ready. So here I'm actually going in and I'm just cutting the bottoms for the pans. So I've got parchment paper, I'm just using a pen so I know what size to cut. And it makes taking the actual cake out of the pan so much easier. It's almost like a guarantee that it's gonna come out. So I buttered the pans. And so when you butter the pans first, or you could put oil, however you decide you wanna do that. And then you put down your parchment paper and then when you flip it over, it gets butter and you only have to coat it one time because obviously when you flip it over, it's gonna have some of that butter on the other side as well. So makes it just super easy. It's like insurance that your cake is gonna slide out. I'm making a chocolate cake, so I'm going to use cocoa powder to coat the pan. If I were making a yellow or white cake, I would have used regular, just all-purpose flour to coat, but since we're making chocolate, I just went with chocolate powder. Now that the pans are ready to go, it's time to make the cake batter. So I'm using the recipe from the Pioneer Woman's Cookbook, and oh, I absolutely love it. It's really simple to make. I don't, I just use a hand whisk, so it really is very simple. This is a sheet cake, but I'm gonna obviously use those pans instead. Works perfect, you can make cupcakes out of that sheet cake recipe as well, super good. So all the dry ingredients were in one bowl. Now we mix up all of the wet ingredients, and this is a really simple recipe. You just kind of fold everything together. There's definitely several steps to it, but, when you make a cake from scratch, oh, it just so good. It tastes so good. This is where the kitchen starts to smell really, really good. Once your butter is melted, you add in the cocoa powder, a little bit of water, and it smells amazing. When you add the hot chocolate into the dry ingredients, this is going to just cool it down enough to then be able to add in your wet egg ingredients so it doesn't cook any of the eggs. It's still very warm, but it won't cook anything, and that's what you want for sure. So just mix, 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 mix. I don't, I've never done this recipe with my like KitchenAid mixer. Everything is done with a whisk, which makes it super convenient for people who don't have mixers, because a whisk works just fine for this. Thank you. 
Now that the cakes were in the oven, baking up, I decided to then make the second batch of buttercream. I will link this recipe down below for you. This was amazing also. Both recipes were really, really good. I did decide to double up on this and definitely thankful that I did because as you'll see in the end, I had exactly enough to frost and make roses. The cakes look and smell great. So I let them sit on the counter for a couple of hours and then I went ahead once they were completely cooled, I took them out and you can see that having that parchment paper like that, it just flops right out and you peel that paper right off and you've got a perfect layer. I started with the filling. So I took the whipped cream that had been sitting in the fridge, I took that out, and I realized that right here was my first mistake. And it was putting whipped cream at the top. And then I'm actually, it's kind of like I'm doing a crumb coat here, which is not what I wanted to do, not with the whipped cream. Because you can see it actually looks like a crumb coat. And you can't really do a crumb coat with whipped cream because it doesn't solidify enough. And even though I kept this in the fridge for a couple of hours, it did harden just a little bit, but not enough to when I now put the buttercream on, it was slipping right off. So my crumb coat ended up being buttercream mixed with whipped cream, which actually ended up being okay, but that wasn't my intention. I did learn though that if I had used a little bit of gelatin in the whipped cream, that could have possibly worked as a crumb coat because it solidifies a little bit more. Next time I'll stick with just whipped cream filling and then putting the buttercream on the top and the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another batch of buttercream because after everything that I did, this is what I have left. And obviously that is not going to be enough to frost this cake and make roses. So I'm definitely gonna make another batch of this. I did go and get more powdered sugar. Honestly, I barely had enough for what I made last night because it calls for four cups of powdered sugar. And the reason I use this recipe is because it had no heavy cream. I used the heavy cream to make the whipped cream. I didn't even realize that most buttercream needs heavy cream. So I might actually use a completely different buttercream recipe. We will see, but like this is how close I was. <laughs> Like there's none left in here. I don't cook with powdered sugar or I don't bake with powdered sugar very often. So that's not something we keep in stock. But this is the book that I love. And this is where I got my chocolate sheet cake. But the Pioneer Woman, she's just amazing. But this is the cake. Obviously this is a sheet cake. I just went ahead and I put them in my rounds. But oh. So good, so good. Highly recommend this book. Delicious recipes for sure. So our cake has been in the fridge overnight and oh, it is perfect. It's definitely going to work. And you can see that I kind of pushed it back into back there a little bit. And when I showed Rob this morning, cause I was super excited about this being like ready. And he said, why didn't you just like, there's not a lot here. We could have just put that elsewhere and just taken like this out all together. I'm like, oh my goodness, that totally made sense. Because you can also see that it's a little bit off centered because it didn't fit all the way in there. So anyways, we'll fix that for next time, but this is ready to go. I'm gonna leave it in here for now. So while it's in the refrigerator, I'm gonna let it stay cold while I work on the next batch of buttercream. And I think I did buy, when I bought the powdered sugar, I did buy a carton of heavy cream. So I think I'm gonna go online and I think I'm gonna look at different recipes and maybe try a different one. And one that makes a little bit more. 
because I have a feeling I'm going to need a lot more than just two and a half cups. I did find another recipe that did use heavy cream, so I went ahead and went with that. The first buttercream recipe that I used that had no heavy cream was by the two sisters. I will link both of these recipes. This one that I'm making here is from the Preppy Kitchen. I will link both of these down in the description box for you. We enjoyed both of them. They were, both tasted really, really good. And I think that what I have to do is just play with my consistency, how much cream to add, how much mixing, am I adding too much air? Because what I'm realizing is that a lot of how your cake will come out has to do with your consistency of your buttercream. I've never made buttercream before, so this was definitely a learning curve for me. And I think next time, every time I do it actually, it's just gonna get better and better. I've brought the cake out of the refrigerator. I'm just needing to center it on the little spinning table. Another thing I learned was that your cake needs to be like completely centered on the spinning table or it's gonna move on you a little bit, which as you'll see, it kind of does on me, but I just use that to my advantage. All right, guys, here we go. I don't know why I am so nervous, but you know what, no matter what, this is gonna be a really yummy cake. I keep telling myself that, so it doesn't matter if it isn't decorated super beautifully, it is what it is. And it's not like I'm making this for anybody. <laughs> I'm making it for you guys. So let's get into it. I've got my brand new buttercream right here. Very yummy, very, very yummy. I think I definitely like this one and I like the consistency a little bit better than the other one, so that's good. And then I've also got my uh, rose nails here or just flower nails. I don't know what they're called exactly, but it's a nail that I'll be making the uh, roses on. No idea how to use those, never done it before, but we have them. <laughs> and apparently once you make it, you have these little scissors, and I just got these on Amazon, and you take them right off the nail and then place them on the cake. All right, you guys, we will see how it goes. And then I've all, obviously I've got my everything in here. And the two things that I need is this one right here, which makes leaves. And then this one right here, no, not that one. Where is this one? This is the one that makes the actual rose petals. So we'll see how it goes. Let's get into this. Like I said before, the consistency of your buttercream is really going to dictate <laughs> what this looks like final product. So it's a lot to do with obviously the consistency of that buttercream, but also your technique. Now, as I was doing this, I realized too that my stack was a little bit lopsided. I tried to fix it with just adding more buttercream. And even when I was like going around and I started going really slowly, I was still pulling off some of the bigger chunks. Again, that's just technique. I just went back in, filled it in, and built it back up, and then just started all over again. Um, the table kept spinning on me, and again, that was because the cake was not centered. So this was definitely a huge learning curve for me, but I had so much fun doing this. And I feel like it's really, you know, you, it doesn't have to be perfect. And even if you're trying to get it perfect, and you can always build back up places where you've taken too much off. And I really like that because really, you can go back and start from scratch if you needed to. Okay. 
Okay, so here I am. <laughs> you guys, this is so hard. I've been at it for about 45 minutes and I'm like, you know what? I kind of like the woody look of this. So I'm kind of going to, yeah, I'm gonna stop here. Good enough, smooth enough. I wanna play with making the roses. So that's what I'm going to do. This is all the extra that I have, which is I think plenty. I'm glad I doubled the batch. So yeah, let's get it. And over there, I'm actually watching Zoe Bakes. She is making the roses right now. So let's watch and let's start. Next time I do this, I'm definitely getting bigger bags. These were the bags that came with the tips that I had, and I think it said they were 12 inch bags. I'm definitely going to get larger bags next time. I think it'll make the whole process a lot easier for me. dang amazing okay super excited about that very excited about that so I was watching the episode and her border up top was a lot bigger than mine so I went ahead and we redid the border I just added on top of what I had and let it kind of come out the side and I like it because it adds a little bit more balance to it so I'm gonna stick this in the fridge now for a little bit let this solidify while I get my rose things ready to go Figuring this out was so much fun for me and it was definitely a learning process. I couldn't really quite get my fingers to work right. It was all about the squeeze pressure and how you twist your fingers. And <laughs> what I realized though was that doing roses is pretty forgiving. Making mistakes is really not a big deal because you could just go right back over it and just add more frosting and fix it. One of the biggest problems I kept running into was that I would get air in the bag. And again, I think that for this size bag, I put too much of the buttercream. I should have put a little bit less and just filled it up more often. So again, I think that having a bigger bag would have made a world of difference. So as I'm doing things, I usually kind of like to explain what I'm doing, but the truth is I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but look at it. I, this is my first rose ever, and I think it looks pretty darn good. Then I just, so all of what I've learned here is just from watching that one episode of Zoe Bakes. But I am very aware, as I'm sure you are too, there are so many YouTube videos that I'm probably going to watch now to kind of perfect this because I enjoyed this process so much. I had such a good time doing this. It was very meditative for me and I... I knew I'd like to do this, but I didn't know that I would enjoy it as much as I did. And I really cannot wait to try and make different flowers, use different colors, and obviously I'm not going to make these big, huge cakes every week, but I'm thinking maybe cupcakes or little mini cakes and then give them to friends and family. <laughs> But I think I've definitely found a new hobby, a new passion, maybe. I don't know. I guess we will see. But what I do know is that this was a whole lot of fun. All 
All right, guys, I am so happy with how this came out. It definitely could be better, obviously. It's not perfect, but for my first time doing this, <laughs> I absolutely love it. My roses definitely got better as I went. I kind of feel like, I don't know, the swirls are a little bit cheesy. I'm gonna try something different next time, but all in all, I think it looks really, really good. I do have a question though. So if I wanted a, a white buttercream cake, is that even such a thing? Because if you're using butter, then obviously it's gonna have like a cream color because butter is yellow. So I don't know, is that even a thing? I guess that's when um, whipped cream would come into play, right? Well, either way, I am very, very happy with how this came out. We're gonna go ahead and cut into it. I'm sure the cake itself will be delicious. We'll see if there is like, <laughs> <laughs> three inches of icing on there or buttercream on there but no matter what I'm very proud of how this came out could be a little bit better but I'll take it this is what it looks like and it tastes delicious Thanks so much for tuning in I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you've not subscribed to Charlani TV, I would love it if you would. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.